Welcome, my friends. This is Maniacal Incorporated, and you join me in the sprawling catacombs of Syrup Vaults, where the frame rate goes to die, and where the dead sleep eternal, or at least until a necromancer shows up. Today, I'm going to take a look at why and how to properly entomb your dead. So the first question is, why do we need to entomb the dead? I have absolutely no idea who this dead figure is here in the middle of our tavern, but they will be able to serve as a useful teaching aid. The first problem is that when your dwarves see a dead body, there is a chance that they will suffer a negative thought. So here we see that Saxel, our duke, didn't feel anything after seeing Maffol Geared Paddle's dead body. But there is a chance that if your dwarves see a dead body in the middle of your fort that they will suffer a negative thought as a result of that. When a dwarf dies or when an animal is slaughtered, their body will rot. And if they are on the surface, nothing will happen. But if they are underground, it will create miasma. And we can see that in our kitchen we are running into a bit of a problem at the moment with miasma from some animals that were slaughtered, and if our dwarves are caught in this miasma cloud, they can feel disgusted, so they can get a negative thought from this as well. So you might be thinking that just like in RimWorld, build a corpse stockpile, position it far away from your fort, take all the bodies there, and let them rot out of view. But there is another negative thought that dwarves can suffer from, if they are forced to endure the decay of a loved one, or a friend, an acquaintance, a pet, even an annoying acquaintance. And this is where a dwarf knows that the body of an acquaintance has been left basically to rot in the open. Here we have one of our great hammer dwarves, Taltig, and we can see that he was uneasy dwelling upon being forced to endure the decay of a pet, and mulling over the recurring memory, allowed him to rethink his intellectual values and changed his personal tendencies. So the fact that his pet was not properly entombed, this has actually affected his personality. And if we take a look, we can see that he can handle stress, but this is less extreme after being forced to endure the decay of a pet. So any of these negative thoughts can actually severely impact the personality of your dwarves. Now it might be possible to deal with those problems by either atom smashing the corpses or dropping them into lava, but we're then still left with one more problem, and that is from the point of view of the dead dwarf themselves. Here is Oodle, whose body is lying in a vat of swamp whiskey. And if Oodle is left here for long enough, or if they're taken to a stockpile and left to rot, they will return as a ghost, and as well as haunting the fort, and causing negative thoughts to the dwarves that witness them, there's also a chance that he will attack them and cause them serious injury. Now, all of these issues can be dealt with by properly entombing your dwarves. To do that, you can come to the Carpenter's Workshop and add a task to create a casket, or you can come to the stone workers workshop and add a task to create a coffin. From the metalsmith's forge, you can create a task in furniture to create, we'll go for silver, and create a sarcophagus, or from your glass furnace, you can create a task to build a glass coffin, if you wish to display the corpse of your dwarf as though they were the leader of the Communist Party. When your coffin is complete and you've picked out an area for it, you can come to your build menu, furniture, burial, and then you can place down how many ever coffins you want to. From there, you can then go to the zones menu and select tomb. Now, take note of what option is selected here. At the moment, I have paint, so I could just paint this single square and accept, and that has now become a tomb. However, if I select multi and try and do the same here, I will be told that that does not work 
because the coffin is not enclosed. It requires a setup like we have here. So this area has not yet been designated as a tomb. And by clicking on it, it basically encompasses the entire square and is now recognized as a tomb. Or I can select multiple. So that's eight tombs created. Once a tomb has been assigned, we can click on it to see that it is available for any deceased citizen to be buried here automatically. You could also allow for pets to be buried in the same tombs. We're going to deal with that in a moment. So we're just going to allow these for uh, dwarves to be buried in. So that covers scenarios in which you have the body to bury. But what about where you don't have a body? Here we are deep below the surface of Cyric Vaults in our cavern. And if we go down one layer over this water, we will find the remains of Catton Frosty Glaze. Catton got into a fight when the caverns were opened up with a cave crocodile who flung him in here. Now, I did make an attempt to uh, carve out a slope the way we could get down to him or the way he could swim out, but he was too badly injured and he drowned. So we do not have an ability to get to his body. And if left here, he would have become a ghost and haunted the fort. So in that case, what we were able to do is to create a slab. Here is a nice slab, and it is a memorial to Catton. And if we read the inscription... Born in the year 75, drowned in the year 104. So by placing this memorial here, even though we do not have access to his body, that has prevented him from raising as a ghost. It has kept his spirit happy. If any dwarves get close to that, they could be upset by seeing the body. If it rotted on the ground, it would have caused miasma. Uh, we also have another slab here. This one is to Olin Dorokados. Another body that we weren't able to gain access to, but we actually do. We do have access to this body. His body is right here in plain view of everyone. We have dwarves passing it by every day, and thankfully, nobody is getting any negative thoughts from it. Can you see Olin's dead body? It's right here. Olin was the victim of a nine-year-old child who was taken by a fell mood. The child murdered Olin, dragged his body to a tanner's workshop, and turned his ribcage into an animal trap. And because we had nothing left of Olin's body to bury, he actually returned as a ghost, and that's why we had to uh, create a slab for him. So to create a slab for a dwarf, it has to be done through the stoneworker's workshop. And you can create a task. The first thing you need to do is make rock slab. And you can see that I have a few made already in preparation of the next time that they're needed. Once the slab has been created, you can then come up to engrave memorial slab. And thankfully, this has a function, a search function, which would be fantastic in some of the other menus, such as intrigue or injustice when you're trying to uh, carry out some interrogations. But if we wanted to, we could type in Olin. And we can see that Olin Dorokados is memorialized, slab engraved. We can see that others are entombed. And we can see here that Olin Odomatus is not memorialized, no slabs engraved. Well, they do actually have a burial spot and they are being taken to that spot uh, right now. And here is where he will be laid to rest in our pet cemetery. And we actually even have a statue of him down here. On one of my Twitch streams, some elves laid siege to the fort. But they got stuck in the buffer zone of animals that we have just in front of the main gates. And Olin killed one of the elves before he himself was struck down. So we made a statue of him. And I've placed it here in a small little temple to the god or the deity of animals. So by uh, checking out when I was assigning this fort, I checked through the list of all the, or this uh, temple, I checked through the list of all the, the gods, and Salo Tree Urton, a titan, 
is associated with animals. So this is our little pet cemetery. So I mentioned there at the start, and we saw with uh, Taltig, that his personality changed. He suffered a negative mood, and his personality changed because he was forced to witness the decay of a pet. When a pet dies, they will not be butchered. You cannot butcher a pet. So the animals will instead be taken to a stockpile, a corpse stockpile, where they will rot and cause their owners, either their owner, if they have adopted one or been adopted, or their animal trainer, who has bonded with them. If, we'll say, in the case of the many, many war dogs that we have here, if these war dogs hadn't yet been assigned to a member of the militia, which is what I generally tend to do with them, the animal trainer would suffer that negative penalty, uh, witnessing or being forced to endure the decay of a pet. Usually what people do is they build an atom smasher, because these dogs will not come back as ghosts, so there's no real problem with just building a stockpile, building a bridge over it, and having that bridge close down on top of them, and atom smash them away. But uh, what I've decided to do, or what I've opted to do this time round, is to build a big sprawling complex, a pet cemetery. Dear God, if a necromancer gets in here. Now, mechanically, I've dealt with everything that needs to be covered for dealing with death in your fort. If you bury your dwarves, they won't rot and cause miasma to spread. They won't cause your dwarves to have negative thoughts from seeing their bodies strewn about the fort, and they won't return as ghosts. If you can't access the bodies for one reason or another, you can build a slab to memorialize them. You don't need to do both, one or the other. As for pets, you can either atom smash their bodies, or you can go to the lengthier process of creating a dedicated burial area for them as well, but do be aware that your dwarves can get negative thoughts if they witness their pets decaying away. But, speaking of necromancers, if you've been watching Syrup Volts on my Twitch channel, you'll know that we have, in this fort, a necromancer mayor, Ushrir Attic Pages, who was, once upon a time, the queen of our civilization, and she seems to have either abdicated or been deposed sometime around the year 56, when she became an apprentice to a necromancer, where she gained her skills. The throne of our civilization is now held by her granddaughter, who recently moved to Sirith Vaults when we became the capital. So something that I imagine her granddaughter, Aiden Roof Evies, would do is create a dedicated tomb for her prestigious ancestor. I'm sure Ushrir hopes that she will never need it. So I've created this tomb. We have a door, which has been decorated by Zuggler Magic Lance, which just so happens to be Ushrir's granddaughter. And we have a silver sarcophagus in the room. So what I'm going to do is create this tomb just for Ushrir Attic Page. Now again, we could click on the coffin, and that will select this entire enclosed area as the tomb. And at the moment, the way things are set up, uh, this tomb will be assigned to anyone. So the next person to die will most likely take it. What we want to do instead is come to this plus sign, and lucky for us, Ushrir is here at the very top. It tells us what type of burial situation all the other dwarves have. So here is a deceased dwarf, and they have a servant's burial chamber. That's pretty much a two-by-one room with a door and a coffin. That's pretty much what they have. Uh, we can see that some people have mausoleums. But Ushrir, at the moment, being a necromancer, has and wants nothing, but we will assign this tomb to Ushrir. And so when they die, they will be buried here. Uh, just outside the Hall of Heroes. So this is a section of the fort where I bury the militia dwarves who die on active service. And as well as actually burying them in copper sarcophagi, I also engrave a slab. Totally unnecessary, but it gives us some interesting information about them. The year that they were born and how they died. 
so suffocated, slain by the cave fishman, Sheen Dent. Here we have another axe dwarf, I believe, slain by another cave fishman. So we had a bit of a scenario where we, where we went down to the caverns to fight a forgotten beast who was and still is hiding in a tree. And while we were mining out a path to him, a lot of my dwarves turned and ran away to get drink, leaving the axe dwarves behind who were pretty much massacred. Somebody who put up a very solid defense, however, was Shorast, Kotherled. And they eventually bled to death, slain by the cave fishwoman, Hope Clefts. So Shorast was one of only a few of the highly trained hammer dwarves who remained behind to help the axe dwarves when the cave fish people set upon them. One of the other hammer dwarves who stayed behind was Taltig, who fought alongside Shorast. Taltig now wields Id Ud, which was the weapon that Shorast had in battle, and if we look at his kills list, we can see that they killed Sheendins and Hopeclefs, the fishwoman who killed Shorast. And in recognition of his bravery, in recognition of his skill, in recognition of the 22 kills that he has racked up, the highest kill count amongst any of our militia, Taltig has been given a tomb in the Hall of Heroes. This is what this entire compound is referred to. Here is where the Queen, Iden Roof Abbeys, will be buried. Here is where our Baron will be buried, or our Duke now. And this is where Taltig will be buried, just across from the statues of all of the great beasts that we have felled. Two Ettons, a Cyclops, here is a statue of them killing a dwarf, a number of decades ago, and four forgotten beasts. But you can see, first of all, that this tomb is already closed, and second of all, that it's not assigned to anyone. This tomb was assigned to Taltig just before he and the other dwarves, the Hammer Dwarves, left to attack a nearby fort. Now, because they left, that's represented in the game as them being removed completely from the fort. So they actually lost all of these tombs that had been assigned to them. Uh, other members had been assigned to the, uh, to the other tombs that are here in this hallway. And they have now all been automatically unassigned from those, so I need to go back and redo that. But we can see that this tomb is actually closed, or this coffin is closed, so there's something in here. This freaked me out the first time, because I thought that Taltik had died, but I hadn't gotten a pop-up. But if we look at what's in here, it's his right upper leg, which was struck off in that dramatic battle in the caverns against the fish people. So there pretty much is death and burial in Dwarf Fortress in a nutshell. We've looked at mechanically how and why you should bury your dead, and also some of the kind of roleplay opportunities that you can add to your fort by creating dedicated burial complexes for your militia dwarves. They don't care that they have tombs, and nobody's going to go and visit them. It's not going to have any positive or negative impact on them, other than it contributes to the wealth of the fort by carving out these areas and decorating them and putting in uh, decorated doors and coffins. Here is a little area that I am building for our legendary crafters. Here is a door that is crafted. It's not crafted by, but it's decorated by Zuggler Magic Lance. And this is indeed the tomb of Zuggler Magic Lance. This is where they will one day be buried. This doesn't improve their mood, they don't want a tomb, they didn't request a tomb, it's not going to do anything for them, but it can be used to tell really interesting stories. Uh, maybe you will create an area in your fort where you will bury your great warriors. Maybe you will build a big room for, and decorate it with some kind of red brick and build a glass coffin. And place it in the dead middle of the room. And that is where your mayor will be buried and everyone will pass by, as though it is the tomb of Lenin or Stalin or something like that. I'm not too sure. But hopefully it's given you some ideas as to what you can do if you're interested in that aspect. Thank you very much for joining me on this episode. I hope it's been helpful. If you have any questions, do type them below. 
Is there any interesting burial practices that you follow in your forts? And does anybody know if burying dwarves prevents them from being raised by necromancers? I'm not too sure. I think necromancers can still get into coffins and raise the dead, so you might want to think about putting a door somewhere to prevent necromancers getting in there. Unless that's the type of fun that you enjoy in your fort. Uh, do check out the description below for a link to my Twitch channel, where Syrup Vaults is continuing on. Just about with that frame rate, but we're continuing on. We're up to about 1.5 million in value. I'd like to get that up to 2.5 before I think about maybe retiring the fort, letting it continue on as the capital of our civilization, and creating a new outpost, and maybe bringing the war to the elves who are being problematic at the moment. Thank you for joining me on this episode. And I hope to see you again in future.